One of the arguments that atheists give about God's existence is that God's invisible. That's what you Christians say. So how are we supposed to believe in invisible God? So they treat the fact that God is invisible as though it's like the tooth fairy. He's invisible. You know what I mean? Santa Claus coming to the ch chimney. How did he get through? He's invisible. So what, what people do often is they try to put God in the category of all these fantasies of the invisible friend that I have. We know that invisible friend you have doesn't really exist. And so that's one of the arguments that, that um, atheists have against God's existence. Well, the New Testament actually deals with the invisibility of God. The Apostle Paul writes in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17, Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible God. Not only is God invisible, he's eternal. In fact, everything that you can see has temporal existence. But God is eternal, all right? So he's also immortal. Everything we see dies. Everything eventually dies and decays, but God's immortal. So not only is God invisible, he's also eternal and he's immortal. But why is he invisible? It's real simply. It's not very difficult to understand. God's invisible because he belongs to a higher dimension than we can understand. He is on the zenith of all dimensions. See, we creatures that's part of this universe are part of the third dimension. There's only three dimensions that we understand. Height, depth, and breadth. That's it. You know the cube that you see? You remember this in physics? There's the cube, and that's what we live in. We live in that three dimension. Well, if, if any beings should happen to be in the second dimension, they would not be able to see us. We would be invisible because we would be of a higher dimension. And someone in the first dimension would definitely not be able to see anyone in the second or third. Because the only thing we can see is what's in the third dimension. They tell us that there is the black holes and they call that the fourth dimension because it's beyond the understanding of time. And yet we can't see it and we'll never be able to see it because if it does exist and it's on the fourth dimension, we by nature in the third dimension cannot see anything beyond our third dimension. But we believe it exists because we see some effects on it, but we'll never see it. Does that mean you deny that it exists? No, what I'm trying to tell you is God is beyond time, space, and matter. And because he's beyond time, he is from eternity past. He has always existed and will always exist. He is beyond matter, which means he's beyond the, the physical solid gas, water. He's beyond anything that we can touch. And then he is beyond, and because he's beyond the physical matter, he's beyond our sight. And he's beyond time and space. That means he's, as we creatures, we're limited in space. We're here and not there, but God's everywhere. So when we talk about God being invisible, it's his nature. Because if he was visible, then guess what? He would only be part of the mortal temporal universe. And that would not make God God. So God is invisible by nature because that's who he is. Any other form of visibility would not make sense. But see, God knows this. So what he decided to do, since he's beyond time, space, and matter, which means he can enter time, space, and matter if he chooses. And that's what he's done. In Colossians 1, verse 15, it says that Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. So God entered into time, space, and matter through his son, Jesus Christ. And since God is beyond all of that, he can easily do that. And that's what he's done through Jesus Christ. And do we have evidence? Absolutely. Jesus died, lived, rose from the dead, and we have great 500 eyewitnesses to his resurrection. So for all the atheists and agnostics who argue that God can't exist because he's invisible, if he was anything but invisible, then he would be on our level, not on his level.